The third principle is that Isaac offering, God does not need it. It might sound like an oxymoron. Because I'm saying it's requested by the Lord, but I'm telling you also that God does not need it. He's not asking it because he's in need of it. I want you to look at the scripture in the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 7. I want you to see this scripture with me. Psalms, chapter 50, verse 7. The Bible says, in verse 7, I'm reading from the ESV, Hear, O my people, I will speak, O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Verse 8, Not for your sacrifice do I rebuke you. I don't rebuke you because you don't give sacrifice or you don't give well. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. In other words, I don't rebuke you because you don't give. You are giving. That's what God is saying. I will not accept a bull from your house, a goat from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine. Hear what God is saying. They think that impressing God by giving. He's saying, listen, all the beast of the forest are mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all the moves in the field. God is basically saying, I own everything that you are giving to me. So when you are giving to God, or he's requesting an Isaac offering, I want you to understand this principle. God does not need it. Why is that important? It is important because one of the critical things to judge whether the man of God in front of you asking for an Isaac offering is really hearing from God or it is just him trying to raise money. It is this particular principle. When you understand that God is all-sufficient, is self-sufficient. He has everything that he needs. He owns everything. He doesn't need anything from you. Then you will understand that if God asks something from you, he is not desperate. He's only asking for your sake. Not for him, for your sake. So when a man of God takes an Isaac offering, and you hear him say, Mama, bring the money quick, bring the money quick, bring the offering, bring the offering, we are closing, we are closing, we are closing, we are closing. That man is a scammer. He is a scammer. Because an Isaac offering, God doesn't need it. There's no closing period. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the minute you hear a man of God, the minute there's a desperation, there's some form of agency. There's some form of compassion. You need to do it now. You need to do it now. You need to do it now. That man is just raising funds. He must just be honest with you. And Isaac offering, it's a big offering. Some of you, you have given your houses. You have given your cars. You have given your savings, your investment in the name of an Isaac offering. And even today, you are still trying to recover from that offering. Why? Because a scammer sat in front of you and said, bring it now, bring it now, bring it now. When you come to an Isaac offering, there's no hurry. Because if God doesn't need it, think about it. Why should there be some agency? Why should I have to do it now? It's a big offering. That is why many marriages have been affected. You find the wife is in church having the last savings in their pockets. He just withdraws some money to bring it home so that they can survive that month. And a man of God comes say, Mama, bring your last one. The one that is in your pocket, the last one. The last one that you have to live on. Try, test God with this. <laughs> hey, be careful. Be careful. An Isaac offering is a very serious offering. It's a sacrifice. You don't give it in a hurry. 
God doesn't need it. He's not in a hurry for you to give it. You don't have to give it in hurry. I, I, I've even seen on TV. They say, we're closing, we're closing, we're closing. Don't miss your blessing. We're closing, we're closing. Call now. Give your money now. Hey, 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 hey. Not with an Isaac offering. The minute you hear somebody, bring your Isaac, bring your Isaac, bring your Isaac. You need to test God. You need to test God. Don't lose your blessing. Be careful. Be careful. An Isaac offering, God does not need it. There is no rush in giving it. When you give an Isaac offering, the minute you hear there is a rush, it's a red flag. Either that man doesn't understand Isaac offering, or the man is just trying to manipulate you. There are some men who do it innocently. They don't understand it. They, they just take a script and run with it. It's innocent. But innocence does not justify the damage. So the man might be innocent, but the damage is done. If you give your car by mistake, the damage is done. It is done. <laughs> it is done. The car is gone. The kite is gone. So the innocence of the man of God does not justify the damage. When it comes to an Isaac offering, there is some form of sanity that you must still have. You don't need to be pressured to do it now. You need to be able to take your time. Heaven is not in a hurry to get something from you. I want you to look with me in the book of Genesis, chapter 18. Genesis chapter, I want you to show you heavenly beings, how they receive an offering. Now you'll notice that their approach seems to differ from the way people take your offering. When you go to the book of Genesis, I want you to look there at verse 1, chapter 18. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre. This is Abraham. Now the Bible said the Lord appeared. And biblical scholars, they say, the word Lord there is actually referring to Jesus appearing in the Old Testament. I'm not going to go to that, but I just want to focus on it. Let's say it's just the angel of the Lord. Let's, let's leave the, that doctrine. It's just the angel, a heavenly being, appearing to Abraham. Remember during the time of Abraham, angels were common. They will go to a place, they'll go to houses, Manoah's house, Gideon, and all that. It was a common thing to have angels coming to people's houses. Now in verse 1, it says, and the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, and as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. These are the angels from heaven. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourself after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. Listen to what the angels respond. So they said, do as you have said. So Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, three Sears of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham rented. So Abraham asked the angels to come in, wash their feet, and be able to wait for him to prepare something for them to eat, and then they can go. And the angels say, go ahead, or we accept the offer. And Abraham went into the house and told his wife, hurry and prepare for them. So the person who was hurrying there was Abraham, not the angels. It is not the angels that told him to hurry. It is himself who decided that I want to hurry to prepare for them quicker. But the angels never said you need to hurry. <sighs> Go to Gideon. Gideon chapter 6. 
Gideon chapter 6. I want you to go to verse 17. You know the story. This is the story when the angel of the Lord also appeared to Gideon to tell him that he's the man of Bala and how blessed he was. And I want to, you know the story. You might be common with it. But I want to start at verse 17. After Gideon had the angel of the Lord blessing him and telling him that he's going to go with him. And this is Gideon speaking, verse 17. And he said to him, if I now have found favor in your eyes, this is Gideon, then show me a sign that, is, that it is you who speak with me. Now this is how now, a sign that it is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. That's Gideon. He said, do not depart from me until I go and fetch a present and set it before you. Listen to what the angel say. And he said, this is the angel speaking, I will stay until you return. I will stay until you return. The angel does not say, I'm in a hurry. If you are speaking, offering my brother, you need to rush. <laughs> he said, look, take your time, my brother. I will wait until you return. The other version say, I will tarry here until you return. Angels, I mean, the Bible speaks in the book of Psalms that they do the biddings of the Lord. This angel is sent here to deliver a message. Imagine they might be waiting for him in heaven for another task. But he said, look, I'm going to tarry here until you return. There's no hurry. There's no hurry to give an offering. The angel is willing to wait, just as in the book of Genesis. The angels were willing to wait for the offering of Abraham. Why should a man of God rush you so much? Heaven is not in a hurry to receive anything from you. Why should a man of God rush you? We are closing. You are missing your blessing. Call now. Call now. Call now. Call now. The lines are closing. The lines are closing. Bring your eyes back. What kind of offering is this? What kind of offering is this? The angels, heaven is not in a hurry to get money from you. You might hurry because you don't want to take their time. If God speaks to you to bring an Isaac, you can hurry yourself, but not because you are pressured by the Lord. You can decide to do it quicker. Not because God is pressurizing you. Because you could see here, an offering is expected, but there's no agency. There's no compulsion from the, from, the, from the angel. He's not saying, no, no, plus I'm hungry. Please, hurry, hurry. No, 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 no. They're saying, we will wait. We will wait. That is why when you read in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, the words of Paul, chapter 9, I want to wrap this principle. In 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, I want you to see there at verse 7 what Paul said about an offering. He said, each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. For God loves a cheerful giver. So the giving should not be under compulsion. Bring that last money. Bring the last. Bring the, it should not be under compulsion. God didn't go to Abraham. I want you to bring Isaac. Bring the Isaac. The one that you love. Bring him now. Bring him now. Bring him now. No. There was a time duration. He could think about it. If actually you read in the book of Genesis chapter 22, I want to go back to the scripture that is our reference scripture. So when you speak about an offering, you need to understand all the principles around it. When you go to the book of Genesis, where we find the offering, Genesis chapter 22, if you look at verse 4 of that particular scripture, he said, On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw a place from afar. If you remember from the beginning, God said, I want you to go to a place of Moriah, and I will show you a place where you must do the sacrifice. So for him to go and do the sacrifice, and Isaac offering, there was a three-day journey. There was a three-day journey, which means he had three days 
to think about the offering was going to do. He had an opportunity to change his mind. He had an opportunity to say, you know what? I don't think I'm hearing God. You know what? I don't think I can go on with this. If God wants to bless me, and this is the price, he might as well take his blessing. He had an opportunity, three days, to think about what he wanted to do. Isaac offering does not have praise. Imagine, you know, Isaac offering are precious gifts. They are precious offering. You will see in the next principle. So that kind of offering, it doesn't want you to just rush things. Sometimes if you are married, you need to go back home, speak to your wife, speak to your husband, and say, this is what I'm hearing the Lord telling me. This is what I'm hearing. You know, if you are a man of God who cares about people and who understand the Isaac offering, you will never pressure people to give Isaac offering. A person who understands an Isaac offering will give you an opportunity to pray about it. I, I, I've never in, in, in my life, I don't remember, because this principle, I learned it back in the days. I think around 2007. That's when I learned this principle. My first Isaac offering was in 2007. I learned this principle then. And since that time, I, I don't know, before then, maybe I was immature. I don't know. I can't remember. But I can't remember telling somebody to bring an Isaac offering. Since I learned this principle, I've never told anybody to bring an Isaac offering. Because I know, I know what this principle implies. I can teach you about it. I can tell you about it. And if you bring an Isaac offering to me, <laughs> look, if I can sense, I will encourage you. But most of the time, you will never, ever hear it from me. You will hear it from God. You can come to me and tell him God told you. But not me. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe one day God will allow me to do that. But at this point, I can't remember telling anybody to bring an Isaac offering. Because of this principle. Isaac offering, you, you, you have time, there's no hurry. It's not a haphazard offering. You don't just go in front of the church and people must rush, rush, bring Isaac, the one that you are holding in, in your pocket. I mean, how can, you know, <laughs> this is a serious offering. It's a very serious offering. It's a sacrificial offering. When you do it, you must thoroughly consider the act that you are doing. It's a test. Nobody just enter an exam or a test room and just sit there without having planned, without having studied, without having prepared. When you do an Isaac offering, you thoroughly prepare for it. You think about it. You meditate about it. You consider whether you're hearing God. Next week, I'm going to do another video where I will be speaking about principles. This will be part two of this message. Principles to follow when you sense that God wants you to give an Isaac offering. I will deal with those principles. But this third principle that I want to wrap up on is that Isaac offering, God does not need it. One of the signs that a person requesting an Isaac offering from you is not of God or is not hearing from God. He might be a good man of God. He might be a good pastor. But one of the signs that he does not understand it is the agency, the compulsion. Do it now. We are closing. Do it now. Don't be left behind. He does not understand the Isaac offering. He does not understand it.